Wait, what do I have to say though? Because I really, do, really don't remember. Hi, I'm Claire. Hi, Claire. Today I'm making gourmet. No, no, broth. Tommy, you're really gonna mess me up. I'm sorry. People, this is where I just start talking, right? Yes. I'm super excited today to show you a recipe that is in the June July issue that um, is kind of close to my heart. Just because sometimes recipes are kind of special and you really like get to know them and love them. And this is one of those, it's a cherry cobbler. And it's kind of near and dear to my heart because this recipe convinced me that cobbler can be just as good as pie, even though I'm a diehard pie lover. So it's really easy to put together and it works with a lot of different summer fruit. So I'm excited to show it to you today. Oh my God, I, can't, I cannot tell you how relaxed I feel that like all the ingredients are out. I know what I'm doing. I have a recipe to follow. I've made the recipe many times before. It is my recipe. I love these days. I basically feel like I'm on vacation. Uh, okay, so the first thing I wanna do is start with my biscuits. So there's two main components, the, a biscuit topping and the fruit filling. The biscuit topping is kind of inspired by like short shortcake recipes. It's a little bit special because it's a cream biscuit but it also has butter. So it's ultra, ultra rich and it makes for a biscuit that's somehow kind of flaky, but also fluffy and delicious. Just regular all-purpose flour, two cups, I have a quarter cup granulated sugar, tablespoon baking powder. This gives the biscuits a lot of lift, but then it's also gonna get lift from butter, and I'll show you that step when I get to it. And kosher salt. Yeah. I sort of feel like there is no such thing as a traditional biscuit recipe. There's so many different styles of biscuits. It's somewhere in between a cream biscuit, aka a scone, and like a, a flaky biscuit. Um, so it's, it's very lightly sweetened, uh, but most of the sugar is gonna come from the filling. I like to use lemon zest. I like to use actually the whole lemon in a recipe, so in this case, the zest goes into the biscuit and it kind of adds like a nice perfume. And then I put the juice into the filling. So I'm just gonna zest the lemon directly into the dry. So the heavy cream is like around 30% butter fat. So it's an incredibly rich ingredient in addition to the butter. And that is gonna make the biscuit just super, super tender. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is add my butter. It's really important that both of these things are super cold. So leave these in the fridge while you're putting together your dry ingredients. The colder the ingredients, the easier the dough will be to work with. And it's also important that the butter stays in discrete pieces. And if it's kind of soft, it can start to just kind of disappear into the flour. So now I'm doing a process that will be familiar to anyone who's made pie dough or biscuits before. I'm smashing the butter pieces into the flour mixture. So I started with the butter cut into about half inch pieces. And I'm just taking kind of my thumbs and forefingers and pressing them together. And it's a little bit easier if you coat all the butter in the flour first. I'm kind of going for irregular pieces. That's gonna make for a nicely textured biscuit. Um, but I kind of want the biggest pieces to be around the size of like an English pea. And you wanna work relatively quickly because the warmth from your hands will start to soften the butter. If this mixture starts to feel a little warm and your butter is getting really soft, you can always stick it back in the fridge or even the freezer. Now I'm gonna add my liquid ingredient, which is my heavy cream, also very cold. So I just drizzle and like constantly agitate the flour mixture to try to distribute. The key here is that you want to evenly hydrate all the flour. But it's not really like making pie dough where the object is to add as little liquid as possible to bind it all together. It'll be a fairly sticky dough. So I have a pretty like wet, shaggy dough. I'm just gonna bring it together in the bowl. Now I'm then going to roll out the biscuits. So I need to sprinkle the bench with a little bit of flour. If you sprinkle from high above the counter, then the flour kind of spreads out. Just wanna get everything out of the bowl kind of in one mass onto the surface. So the dough is pretty, it's a little sticky, but with a nice coating of flour, you'll be able to handle it okay. So I just patted it down into like a three quarter inch rectangular square, doesn't matter. And now this is an important technique. You, you can skip this part if you want, but I think it really adds a lot of texture to the biscuits. So I'm gonna stack the dough in quadrants. So I'll show you, I'm gonna cut it first. I'm gonna cut it in half lengthwise and then crosswise. I'm trying to be even about it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and now I'm gonna stack each of these quadrants. So first, I'm gonna dust a bit of flour. And what this is doing is, it's taking all the pieces of butter and quadrupling them in terms of height. Now what I wanna do is pat this down and I'm gonna roll it out. And I've taken all the butter that's in there 
and I've stacked it and now flattening it. So it's making lots and lots of little sheets of butter. And those sheets of butter are what are, is going to produce a very flaky biscuit. So this is a technique that I use for pie dough. Anything where like you want flakiness, like a, almost like a quick puff pastry, you can do this. So it's just a nice, quick kind of, they call like lamination is the technical term for making croissanto and that kind of thing. It's sort of a quick, like cheater's version of lamination. And I'm gonna get it down into a half inch slab. Okay, this looks great. And I decided to make the biscuits really small for several reasons. One, the smaller the biscuit, the less kind of gaps you have all the way around when you fit them into the baking dish. And secondly, I thought they were very cute. So I'm using a one and a half inch cutter. If you don't have a cutter this small, you could use like an upside down shot glass. So I'm just gonna go around and start punching out. And then as I punch, I'm gonna transfer to this plate because once I'm done with the biscuits, these are gonna go into the fridge to chill while I make the filling. I also like to flour the cutter. It just helps everything to release really cleanly. And I'm also cutting the biscuits, fitting them as close together as I possibly can. I'm gonna try to get a yield around 40, which I was finding is approximately how many I need to cover the whole baking dish. It's a two quart baking dish. With dough like this, you always wanna work quickly, you wanna work cold, and it's always better when you're cutting something out the first cut. The biscuits that are from this initial round of punching are gonna look better, but if you need to gather and re-roll the scraps, it's perfectly fine. I did it before. So a good technique for biscuits is press all the way down, and then once you hit the surface, give it a turn, and it will just help to like release the biscuit from the rest of the dough. All right, so let's see how many that is. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, I lost count. How many? 36, 37, 38, 39, 30. My hands are clean. 31, 32, 34, 35. Okay, 35, that's what I got. Okay, so I have to cut five more. All right, so I'm gonna take the biscuit scraps and I just kind of like put them on top of each other, especially the larger pieces. I only need five, so that's not so many. It kind of really, your yield depends mostly on kind of like the dimensions of your slab and how, how ably you can like, you know, cut the biscuits out close together and minimizing gaps. Yeah, with re-rolling scraps, I try not to like gather the scraps and put them into a ball because I don't want to really destroy the formation of the layers. Let's see if I can get five out here. I think I can. So here's my plate of biscuits. These are going to go into the fridge now. I don't need to cover them. They won't be in the fridge very long. Um, but the idea is that I want these to be cold when they go into the oven. So they're going to chill while they make the filling. All right. So fresh, hold on. <laughs> Figure out what my thought is. Okay. Um, fresh cherries are just making a first appearance in stores. So we have two pounds fresh cherries. Of course, you can use frozen. So these are pitted. You do have to, you don't have to buy a cherry pitter, although I highly recommend getting one of these. It is kind of one of those slightly annoying, like single function kitchen items. So the cherry pitter, this is a common design. You put the cherry in and this little piece you kind of plunges down to remove the pit. Sometimes it gets stuck and you kind of have to pull it out. That's kind of annoying. I always tell people if I'm making cherry pie, I'm like, eat carefully because there might be a pit in there. But that just shows you that it's homemade. Where is the nice pit? Biodegradable flat straw here. Oh yeah. So this is the ice. This is the straw for my iced coffee. It is biodegradable. I know plastic straws are on their way out, which is a good thing. But another way you can pit cherries, or so I've heard, if you don't have a cherry pitter, is with. It's unfortunate. <laughs> okay, but anyway, you just need something, you can use a wine bottle. You just need something with a, like a, a small opening where you can rest the cherry and then there's room underneath. So you just force the straw, this <laughs> biodegradable straw <laughs> is a little bit flimsy. We don't have any like um, metal straws or anything like that. I have metal straws at home, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, might be, we might have to cut this part out. But anyway, you just, <laughs> Only 300 more cherries to go after this. <laughs> Part of the problem is that these cherries are like also fairly underripe, and so this works better with ripe cherries. You know what? Instead of this dumb method, I suggest something else, which is. Oh boy. Here we go. 
Here's what I really suggest if you don't have a cherry pitter. Just use a paring knife. Cut around the cherry pit like you're cutting open a peach and just pull out the pit. No big deal. Your hands are gonna get stained. You do have to do two pounds. Sorry. So I have right here a two quart baking dish. This is an oval baking dish, but a two, like you can use anything with a two quart capacity with low sides. And now I'm just gonna mix together my filling ingredients. I have a half cup sugar and I'm using a full quarter cup of lemon juice. So that was the, you know, I already used the zest. Now I'm using the juice. And I do think it just benefits from a good amount of acidity. Then cornstarch is a thickener. That's three tablespoons. And I always like a little bit of warm spice with cherries. So this is um, ground cinnamon, a little vanilla extract. You could use vanilla bean if you want. Pinch of kosher salt. And now another ingredient I really like to combine with cherries, which is almond extract. Cherries and almond, classic combination. I love the way the flavors go together. So it's only a quarter teaspoon. It's only a quarter teaspoon because almond extract can be a very overpowering flavor. And you just kind of want like a hint or essence of it without it overwhelming the rest of the filling. So it's optional if you don't, a lot of people like are kind of put off by the flavor of almond extract. I really like it, but only in small amounts. You wanna head, you wanna head back over this way? There we go. All right, just putting the filling in the dish if you're interested. So let me speak for a minute about why I love baking with cherries and why like I do even recommend going through the trouble of pitting them. So cherries are one of those kind of stone fruits that, like blueberries, like they're, it's, they're, full, they're fully covered in kind of a shiny skin, like a taut skin. And so because of that, unlike peaches or plums where they're much bigger and you have to cut them. So cherries are a great filling for cobbler because the, ju the juices don't immediately release, which gives the biscuits a chance to start to bake all the way through rather than just like immediately get drowned in liquid, which then prevents them from fully baking. So cherries are really an ideal fruit for cobbler. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my biscuits. And I haven't added any butter to the filling for a couple of reasons. One is there's already butter in the biscuits. And two, I'm gonna brush the biscuits with butter and that butter is gonna kind of drain into the filling and enrich it. So I don't need to add it up. It's a good idea always to bake on a foil lined baking sheet with a rim. I recently baked a bunch of slab pies with nothing underneath and it was like a full on smoke alarm, like category five disaster. So always put something to catch the drips. And now these are nice and cold and I'm just gonna start laying them down in, in no particular pattern. The most important thing is that you just kind of tightly fit them together. The more tightly you pack them, the more it will encourage the biscuits to rise up and, and get tall rather than kind of out. And now I have melted but cooled butter. I don't want to use hot butter because I'm not trying to soften or warm up the biscuits. Um, it's a lot of butter, so I'm going to be very generous and just dab all over the tops. So the butter obviously is about flavor, but it's also going to make the tops of the biscuits brown really well. And now just a little bit of raw sugar. If all you have is granulated because that was what you put in the filling, totally fine. You can use granulated. But raw sugar is just kind of sparkly and has bigger crystals, so it looks really pretty on top. So this is ready to go into the oven. I have the oven preheated at 400. The idea is to initially give the biscuits a generous blast of heat so that they get kind of a jump start in baking through before the filling starts to get really juicy. And then I'm gonna turn down the heat. So the whole thing has like the rest of the time to kind of bake evenly and all the way through. So it was initially in the oven for 10 minutes at 400 and then I dropped the temp and it's been 55 more minutes. So 65 total and it's done. I have lots of bubbling juices and golden brown biscuits. So I'm gonna pull it and just let it rest for a little bit. So this is like molten hot bubbling filling. I wanna let it rest. Um, and I can serve it warm or room temp. So we're just gonna let it sit here until it has a chance to cool down. And also, you know it's done because you should see the juices running. That's a good sign. There should be ap active bubbling and you should expect drips, which is why I'm very happy we put down the foil. I will say that this cobbler falls into the category of fruit desserts that is acceptable to eat for breakfast that day after you make it, which is my favorite kind of dessert. 
So there, there's not a lot of cornstarch here. I didn't want a really thick, almost like gloppy filling. If you like a slightly more set filling, you can add a tiny bit more. I don't think it really needs it. Of course, it depends on the juiciness of your, um, of your fruit. And because it's still warm, the juices are a little bit runny. I think cherry desserts are my new favorite category of dessert. I love them. Okay, all right, I'm gonna give it a taste. My favorite way to eat this cobbler is, use my hands, to take a biscuit, invert it, put a little ice cream on it, and then top it with more cherry. There's no better dessert than a warm dessert served with vanilla ice cream. It's so good. The biscuits are so light and tender. You can look at the, at the crumb right there. So good. And I love how the tops get really crispy from the butter. And it's just like, it's so ideal then to have this kind of juicy filling and then use the biscuits to soak it up. It's just everything I want in a summer dessert. Doesn't even make me, I like it so much I don't even care about having to pit two pounds of cherries. It's quick to assemble. It uses in-season fruit. It has that great like serve warm with cold ice cream thing. It's good for breakfast the next day. It's easy, it's impressive. It's all those things, it's fun. <laughs> you wanna taste a little cobbler? Yes, yeah, not no. just because like this is a beautiful dessert but because I think at this point you know that I love cherries. No, I love cherries. I love, I love cherries. I think Andy and I, we can share one. Yeah. Will you be winning? I figured. Yeah, Although, take, take whatever you want. Oh gosh. Where do you kinda, start? I just keep sitting over here picking off pieces one by one. I want? Fruit is nature's dessert. This is just so mm. pretty. Like to look at. Yeah. Fun to make, fun to look at, fun to eat. The biscuits are so good. I know. <laughs> That's too sweet and so fluffy. Mm, I have to stop eating. Yeah, they're really light. You guys, I have to stop. Mm. I'm go over here. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Claire. You. Thanks, oh, you're welcome. Thanks for thank time. Thank you. Hey, hi. You want some? Yeah. Can I make you some? Yeah. I think this is my favorite dessert that you've <gasps> ever made. Really? Yeah. This time it's with fresh cherries too. I've they're, had this like, they're available. Four times. I know. I guess when we did it, we did. You know what? I've had it a lot of times too, and it does not get old. It's so good. Thanks. It is really I can, good. Like, you, no, you can stay here. I have to go away because I can't be around this. Did we already shoot? Can I destroy this? Oh oh, you know, the there's nobody upstairs at work today. Nobody. But, I, 50 percent of the reason why I came in today was because I was heard that the cobbler was going to be made, and that was like my motivation for coming in. I feel like that was a good decision. Yeah. Ultimately. I can't stress enough. There's zero people on the office floor. <laughs> I got like the scraps from Gabby and Andy. All right. No one has eaten scraps. There's half of it left. Thank you. Are you feeling self-conscious about your shirt? No. <laughs> Andy, are you taking school pictures today? It's like the one day I wear a polo shirt. And you know what? This polo so shirt cute. is a really old shirt, and I will give it to That's my nice. son or daughter. Oh, really? In the future. Okay. I don't have a son or daughter, but in the future. And so I'm holding on to it, and I tried wearing it today, and yeah, it's a little snug. Yes. So I won't wear it again. Was it your dad's or something? No, it was mine. I, oh. I think we talked about this shirt before. You really like it. Me. No yeah, I like it. I like polo shirts. Polo shirts are good. Like, I think I have a stash. Emma. I think it's I don't know. Your mom got it. My mom would Emma. have her buy me this shirt. 